YouTube, today we're gonna take a look at the top 10 Apple laptop buying mistakes. The new Macs just hit the market and they're continuing to hit the market and a lot of people are making these mistakes which are gonna cost them more money in the long run. So let's just avoid that all together and know what we need and want ahead of time. So starting off at mistake number one, picking the wrong size. You guys, I can't stress this enough. If you live near an Apple store or an authorized Apple dealer, head down there and spend time with all of the different size laptop machines. They're all on display for you. You're able to pick them up and just kind of get a feel for and experience what it would be like to own that machine. What better way to pick the right size than to experience the size itself in real life, real time. So please run down to the Apple store or authorized dealer and just remember this, you have to literally live with this thing every single day, whether it's portable use or not. Think about that. All right, big mistake number two, not putting your budget first. I, I I see this all the time. I'm guilty of it too. A lot of times you get caught up in what you see reviewers getting, you see this, you see so many options, you want the whole kit and caboodle, but at the end of the day, we have a certain budget and a certain amount to spend. And I think it's good to organize that budget, that amount, a hard ceiling on it. And once you have that hard ceiling, please stick to it. No matter what upgrades you want or need, make sure they all fall within that budget ceiling. Recently, I made a bunch of buying guides going over each parameter to hopefully help you make a more sound purchase decision. All right, laptop mistake number three, not deciding exactly how many ports you need because depending on which Apple device laptop that you choose to go with, there's a certain amount of ports available and a certain amount of ports that are not available. So if you need an SD card reader, that will eliminate a handful of choices for you and narrow it down. If you don't need an SD card reader, but you need more than two USB-C slash Thunderbolt ports, then that narrows it down for you. So figuring out exactly how many ports and which ports are most important for you, and that way you narrow in on the more ideal model for your everyday use. Mistake number four, not knowing which CPU you need or should purchase. Now, it's getting complicated and very complex with these new Apple Silicon chips because they're all so good. It's like, do I get the M1, the M1 Max? Wait, there's an M1 Ultra. And then now there's the M2, M2 Max, and soon to be M2 Ultra. But if you take your time and you do your research and you understand what it is you need out of this machine, just think, hey, am I gonna be doing this? Am I gonna be doing that? How long am I going to keep this machine? And what task? do I need to get done? And then you can come to the glorious place of YouTube where you can figure out exactly which tasks require what CPU. For the majority of most people, the base M2 or M1 will service most of your needs. And then the M1 Pro and M2 Pro will help those entry level pro users or you know higher demand users get a lot more out of their machine. And then we have the Max and the Ultra, which I think in those territories, those people should know what they want and need. Now mistake number five, this one's important, not picking enough RAM. This is unified memory. And what unified memory basically means is you cannot upgrade this later. What you choose now is what you have for the entirety of this machine. It is soldered on RAM chips. And the beauty of unified memory is it's super close to everything and it's super fast. The downside is what you pick is what you have. You cannot upgrade these later. So please pick the proper amount of RAM that you need in order to handle whatever tasks you're going to be doing. The standard like base model eight gigabytes of RAM, although a handful of you guys can get along with that, 16 gigabytes seems to be the most common sweet spot. Again, don't forget, go in order, budget, you know, CPU needs, and then we get here. Try to stay within your budget. And now we have mistake number six, not picking the right amount of storage. This is your internal hard drive and you can't expand this either. And at different storage sizes, you get different speeds. Obviously at the smallest, you're gonna get the slowest speed. So as you make your way up into higher storage sizes, the price jumps tremendously, but also does the speed and the amount of storage shifts. So, this part gets complex because you do have the option of getting fast external storage options for the majority of you that is going to cost you a lot cheaper than what Apple is going to charge you. But here's the kicker and the main thing I want you guys to focus on. 
all of those system files and program files, how much room do you actually need for the things that you actually just want to keep on your computer? How much space is necessary for those things? Because those are the essentials. So think about it and think about it in the right way because this is an expensive decision and it's also a crucial one because if you continue to fill up your internal hard drive to the max or close to the max and you operate your device, you are gonna cause that disk to fail extremely fast and a lot sooner than it is intended to. Remember, I'll put this up as always, the TBWs, the amount of terabytes written before that drive size is about to hit imminent failure. Mistake number seven, I'm guilty of this one a lot. Using FOMO to drive your decision in purchasing whatever said machine. You know, listen, they're updating and upgrading every year. They're getting better and faster and more efficient. And they're just looking like the grass is greener on the other side. Sometimes that's not the case. And when you try to go from machine to machine year after year, you're losing and just throwing away money because everything devalues. Although Apple does hold some of the best value in the market, especially right now, because even last year's models are still kicking butt alongside of this year's models, but still relax. Do not allow FOMO to drive purchases and finesse you out of your wallet. All right, mistake number eight, picking too much power. There's so many times that I see in the comment section, hey, I only do this, this, and this, but I'm getting the max with the max amount of RAM and the max internal storage so that this can last me for years. That's not necessarily the best decision always. It's all about if you follow the order, pick the chip that's necessary for however long you're going to have this device and whatever task you need to do, then you get the right amount of RAM and then you get the right storage option. You should go in that order and more in that ideology. Don't just pick the biggest and baddest and the best thinking that, hey, I get this, I'm good and I'm set. You may be overpaying and overspending and you can probably take some of those savings and put those elsewhere. Maybe get more items within the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> and then there's mistake number nine, which is kind of picking back in off of number eight, not picking enough headroom. Headroom is just allowing yourself space and room to grow. Hey, I only need 16 gigabytes with my workflow now, but I know in the future my workflow is gonna double or triple and I'm gonna need 32 gigabytes within the lifetime of me planning to have this device. So if I buy 16 gigabytes of RAM at that point, I'm bottlenecking myself. And now I'm not giving myself enough headroom to grow into the 32 gigabytes that I projected I would need in the future. Again, you need to be calculated about this. There's a lot of research you can do. You can watch a lot of videos, see how people are using their devices, but you also have to be realistic because thinking in the future terms of saying, hey, I might do this, I may grow to this, but not actually being motivated and actionable enough to actually grow to that point, at that point, you're throwing money out the window. So be very calculated in this decision and be very intentional. And my last and final Apple laptop buying mistake, number 10, not following your gut. So many of you come here and ask me, hey, I, should I get this, should I get that? Some of you guys need guidance, but a lot of you are coming here just to justify what you already know you want deep down in your gut, but you just want me to tell you yes. When from the beginning, you could have followed your gut. Because at the end of the day, I don't care what you ask me or what decision or where you say you're in between and what you're going back and forth between, deep down in your gut, you know which one you actually want or need. And at the end of the day, just follow your gut. Now, don't be like those people earlier who I just spoke about that just get the maxed out max with the top RAM and the top hard drive just to get the biggest and baddest, but still, again, follow your gut because I think your inner intuition is just always going to lead you in the right path. Hopefully, this video helps you make and avoid these Apple laptop buying mistakes and help you pick the right MacBook for yourself. And hopefully, I just made it that much more easy for you to pick the right laptop for you. Peace. If you're wondering if I'm qualified to answer these questions about which laptop to pick, just know I test a lot and I use a lot, okay? And one last thing, not every single content creator is justified to give you advice as to how to spend your money. So be wise and be considerate. Follow your gut in that right too.